Moses' structure formation and Moses' star formation and Higgs' contact group 31. Sadly, I understand that title. Um, <laughs> and I want to know that I, I actually looked this paper up uh, just the other day, and there's several women on this uh, JN English and Horsheimer and Zipladoff. There are several women on this paper. It was published in the Astronomical Journal this year, which is one of the professional astronomical journals in the world. Very high political journal to get published in it. And they took this picture using uh, optical and ultraviolet telescopes, different wavelengths to get different things. And you can see, you know, here's the, the two different pictures. It's a side by side. It's got some galaxies here. All these galaxies are part of a single group. And it's kind of hard to see that because they're not annotated. So what the authors did is very helpfully annotate. <laughs> Joke. 
I apologize for that, but this, is, this is actually this has the advantage of being true. When I was working on the Hubble Space Telescope for several years, we used to get pictures back from it, and every morning they would be sitting there waiting for me, we'd print them out, and I'd go through them one after another, pull them off the room, look at me, yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing. A lot of the times when it's, when it's pointed at something with one camera, something interesting, the other camera is just pointing at a blank area of the sky. And we would see stars, and we would see sometimes little fuzzy galaxies. Most of the time we didn't see anything because most of the sky is empty. But every now and again, we'd get something really cool. And then one day, we got this picture of two galaxies down here. Now you can see, if you look, everything fuzzy in here is a galaxy, and it's a long way off. But there were these two spiral galaxies. Now one of them is edge on, and one of them is face on, and they're both about a billion light years away. A billion with a B. But look at that. If that doesn't look familiar to you, okay, I'll look at that. And I'm in no way up on the screen to, you know, sort of inflict myself upon Quill Wheaton, who is here and made you know, in charge of inviting me back on uh, to another Woodstock, but I will say that it is a pleasure to be here, where no astronomer has gone. And as a good scientist, I will uh, list my credits here. These, these pictures all came from a bunch of different people, including Amanda Bauer, who is astropixie and who has found herself the keeper of the astronomical genitalia in sight. Uh, if you go there, you'll see, you'll see a couple of pictures uh, by her. They're terrific. They're very funny. And I just want to add one more thing, and that is, I, I tweeted about this a couple of days ago, my show Bad Universe, where we, we talk about astronomical events uh, wiping out the Earth. Episode 1 aired about a month ago. It did pretty well. Episode 2 has just been announced. It is airing on the Discovery Channel Wednesday, October 6th. And I have to say, it's 10 p.m. It's about alien invasion. Uh, there's some really cool stuff in it. I'm not going to give it away. But I will say that uh, the lead-in show for this, it's on at 9 on Wednesday, is... Um, <laughs> Can somebody, can somebody give me a hand? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Adam, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I can't remember. It's actually the season premiere of Mythbusters. So, uh, I, I have it on good word that it's a really good night in television. So that's, that's all the plug I'm going to do. Thank you very much. It's an honor to stand here with everybody else in the talk.